So once again, good morning, good morning. and it's wonderful to see everyone here. We're actually starting a few minutes early for the press conference, because I guess Penn South folks and uh, Bayard Rustin fans know how to get to an event on time or a little early. Yeah, there you And I'm just going to share a few words about how we got here today, um, in terms of the unveiling of this plaque at... Louder! Yes. Louder! Just keep your mouth real close to the mic. Okay, <laughs> folks in front think it's too loud and the folks in the back want it much louder so we'll try to make everyone happy so I want to welcome you to the dedication of the Bayard Rustin memorial plaque at Penn South a few years ago some individuals got together and petitioned to get Penn South building 7 listed on the National Register of Historic Places because it was the longtime home of Bayard Rustin the Board of Directors decided to create a permanent marker honoring Byard, and two years later, we're here today. One of the challenges of this project In the words of biographer John D'Amelio, who wrote the book Lost Prophet, The Life and Times of Byard Rustin, Rustin deserves a place in our national memory as one of the key figures of his time. More than anyone else, Rustin brought the message and the methods of Gandhi to the United States. He insinuated nonviolence into the heart of the black freedom struggle. He resurrected mass people protest from the graveyard in which Cold War anti-communism had buried it and made it once again a vibrant expression of citizen rights in a free society. Rustin was a visionary. And on the one hand, while the civil rights movement had transformed the nation, it served as a catalyst for numerous other liberation struggles to follow, for gender equality, for many racial justice struggles, for LGBTQ rights. We are facing a world today where bigotry is promoted from the highest office, children are taken from their parents, Whole groups of people are denied basic I'm happy to invite our first speaker. Corey Johnson is the speaker of the New York City Council. He's the representative for this Chelsea neighborhood. He entered the national spotlight when, as captain of his high school football team, he came out as publicly gay and was profiled in the New York Times on the front page. He began telling his story to audiences of young people. I hope I'm not taking anything from your speech. <laughs> and among his top advocacy concerns are the rights of tenants, victims of domestic violence, LGBTQ New Yorkers, those involved with the criminal justice system. We're honored to have Corey as our first speaker in this event. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I am so actually moved to be here today. This is such an important occasion for, of course, Penn South, but not just for Penn South, for the entire city of New York, for the country. Beard Rustin was, as was said, an, icono an, an, icono an iconoclast and visionary. He prized intellectual honesty over dogma and consistently fought for the rights of the downtrodden, whether they be African American people, Soviet Jews, or LGBT people. He learned about nonviolent civil disobedience in India through Gandhi's teachings and introduced his key teachings to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who, as we all know, used them to great effect in the United States of America. Baird was the chief organizer of the March on Washington. He organized the Freedom Ride, the, mm -hmm. he organized the first Freedom Rides, and he helped protect the property 
of Japanese Americans jailed in internment camps during World War II. My, are we living in strange times. His work in New York City is particularly relevant today. He went walked out of schools to shed light on racial imbalances in city classrooms. In 1987, when he died, he had just returned home from a humanitarian mission in Haiti. It is indisputable that his influence on social justice movements in our country runs bone deep. But for years, he did not get the credit that he rightfully deserved. He was a gay man born in 1912. And for that, for years, he was marginalized, both by his enemies and his allies. Enemies used his sexual orientation against him, and allies unfortunately caved when threatened with it. But Baird Russin persevered, and he persisted. He went on to push for LGBT rights in New York State. And in his essay, From Montgomery to Stonewall, he urged the LGBT community to continue protesting to live in dignity. It's amazing that he wrote that essay from Montgomery to Easy relevant to each and every one of us today. What do we need to do that is concrete? He wrote in a 1986 essay, we have to fight for legislation whenever we are to state the case clearly as blacks had to do in the South when it was profoundly uncomfortable. Thanks to Bayard Rustin, it is not uncomfortable today for many people as it was years ago. He gave us all a blueprint to make the world a better place and for that, each and every one of us here today and folks who aren't here today must and should all be profoundly grateful. This memorial is so well deserved and long overdue and it is fitting that it is here at Penn South. This Penn South is a very special place. Bayard moved here in 1962 and he lived here with his partner, Walter Nagel, who I see right here, who I love very much. Amazing, amazing, amazing man. Until his death. Respondent, clinically depressed and suicidal because I was struggling with my sexual orientation. I didn't know, or I didn't think that I knew, any other gay people in the world. And when I came out as a junior in high school at 16 years old, I was the only openly gay student in my school out of 1,500 kids. This was in 1999, about six months after Matthew Shepard had been murdered in Wyoming. And of course, times were very different then than they are now. But times were not that bad in 1999 compared to when Bayard Rustin was leading social justice movements, being jailed because of his sexual orientation, continuing to speak out and inspire people and fight not just for LGBT people, but anyone who is marginalized or vulnerable or oppressed in any way. And it is still June, so we are still in Pride Month. And to me, Pride Month is both a celebration of who we are in an unabashed way, but it is also a reflection or Audrey Johnson. Clear standing up here today. I would not have been elected to the city council. I would not be speaker of the New York City Council. If it were not for all of the brave men and women who came before me, whether it be Tom Dwayne or Bayard Rustin or Audra Lord, or Sylvia Rivera, or Marsha P. Johnson, anyone who cleared the path 
for a younger generation of LGBT leaders to be able to be themselves, to be able to have a level of self-confidence, to have moved the needle in society on acceptance. I stand here literally on the shoulders of Bayard Rustin. My ascent, my life, my ability to understand my history, my ability to see the connections between the LGBT civil rights movement and other civil movements would not be possible without this amazing man. So I am, and it's kind of fitting that we're doing it uh, in the shadows of uh, Lamartine Place, which was the only known site on the Underground Railroad. Happening here today. So I am, I am just tremendously grateful. I'm actually very moved um, to be here today. I want to thank Walter uh, for everything that he has done um, to carry his partner's life and legacy on, to not allow the flame to be extinguished. And I also want to thank State Senator Brad Hoylman, Assemblyman Dick Gottfried, and my dear friend on the New York City Council uh, from Queens, uh, Danny Drum. Thank you all very, very much. Rest in power, Baird Rustin. Corey, thank you so much for that speech. And it's, it's such a blessing to have everyone here today.